851, turn right heading 180. Hey everyone, welcome to DJ's Aviation. After covering why Boeing start their aircraft names with a 7 and also ends it with a 7, today I wanted to explore the same sort of thing with Airbus. Why do Airbus aircraft start with an A and then have a 3 follow? This is excluding the A220, which recently joined the Airbus portfolio of aircraft. Airbus over the past few decades have continued to expand their aircraft portfolio and introduced new state-of-the-art aircraft, like the A350, A320neo and A330neo. In addition, we've witnessed Airbus launch the largest passenger plane in the skies, being the A380. Over the coming years, we'll continue to see Airbus enhance their A321 series, which serves as a popular middle-of-the-market airliner. Airbus are also eyeing the further development of their A350 series, specifically launching the A350-1000 ULR for Qantas and their Project Sunrise. Similar to Boeing, the Airbus name decision came from one singular aircraft, that being the A300. This was the original aircraft with Airbus and received its naming because it was designed specifically to seat 300 passengers. Quite a subtle yet genius way of naming aircraft. Soon the aircraft changed in design and moved to a 250 seater plane. By then though Airbus didn't want to rename the aircraft and so the A300 stuck. Why did the change from the 300 seat capacity to the 250 seat capacity occur though? Well, it was down to Rolls-Royce and the engine they were planned to produce for the A300, which became unavailable. The engine was set to be the world's most powerful engine, to be known as the RB207. However, Rolls-Royce focused on the Lockheed Trister and other engines rather than the RB207. Therefore, they were never able to truly dedicate time to begin the production of this RB207, and this was in the time frame that Airbus wanted it. The A300 then had to get a different engine, the CF6. In turn, Airbus had to readjust their aircraft to bring it down to 250 seats rather than 300. Airbus did not undergo big changes structurally like Boeing after the closure of the Second World War, at least it hasn't been noted, but it did continue to develop jet aircraft which increased the speed of flying. At the same time, Airbus developed rocket technology and further jet power. A question a number of you may have now is why do their military aircraft have the designated 400 number, like the A400M? Well, very similar to Boeing, Airbus would have designated specific numbers for the type of aircraft they were offering. For instance, 300 and now probably 200 would be solely for commercial aircraft, while the 400 number was chosen for military aircraft. That means if Airbus released further military aircraft, they would likely be in the 400 to 500 number range and be something like the A450, A480 and so on. If they wanted to launch more commercial aircraft, would potentially see the A360, A370, A390 and so on. This doesn't yet explain why Airbus had the A310 at their disposal. Why did the aircraft jump in 10 numbers? Why wasn't it the A312 or the A317? Well, originally Airbus planned for a shortened fuselage A300, and the name designated back then was the A300B10. Airbus didn't believe this well sounded good enough, especially in a marketing sense, and selected the A310 as its formal name. Marketing is crucial to the success of any aircraft, and it is of paramount importance that one selects a name that is easily recognisable easy to remember, and most of all, simple. From that point forward, they continued to name their aircraft by multiples of 10. This is how the A320, A330, A340, A350, and Airbus A380 were all born. Currently, Airbus has the A360, A370, and A390 all available to them if they deem further aircraft are necessary. In comparison to Boeing, Airbus do have a lot of wiggle room in terms of future aircraft within the A300 series. Airbus continued over the years to expand on specific families, with their A320 series being the best example. In past decades, they've released the A318. A319 and A321, showing while they do name their aircraft by multiples of 10, there is wiggle room on either side of that even number to add new variants. Airbus uses their first part of the aircraft name to really define the aircraft type, for instance the A330neo 
or just A330 is recognized as the A330neo. This is what most people will say when referring to the plane. The last part, for instance the Dash 800 or the Dash 900, will describe the aircraft type to us even more and determine which variant of the series it is. Usually the last part of the aircraft name will line up with the engine type which is actually attached to the aircraft. For example, when spotting you may say the A330neo and then add the Dash 900 variant. This just gives those around a better understanding of which type of aircraft you're actually talking about as nowadays aircraft have multiple variants. What's next for the aircraft manufacturer? Many said it was the A360, A370 and A390 as these numbers still needed to be filled with aircraft. Others have said that the A200 series, similar to the A300 series, will be the next big thing for the European aircraft manufacturer. Realistically though, Airbus is still working hard on enhancing their A350 series, with the A350-1000 ULR, A350-1000, A350-900 ULR, A350 Regional and other variants being designed as I speak. These variants are also either being planned or simply just advertised. They have their A320neos which will be around for decades to come no doubt and have been known as the staple aircraft for the majority of airlines and they've also released their A330neo which just gained a certificate for operating. And that's not forgetting their A380 and even the potential A380 Plus which will be on offer as an upgrade should customers wish to add the new features or just order the new plane. So that leaves the A300, A310 and A340 as the three aircraft that really won't be around in 15 years. Airbus has a number of plane names available, but a problem with using these names is the way in which they name their planes. For example, the A340 is quite different to the A380. Airbus selected the A380 name as it was deemed to be a sizable upgrade on their A340, double the size. Realistically, it would not make a lot of sense to in introduce an A319 sized aircraft as the A360 as it simply doesn't fit between the A350 and the A380. This is where the A200 series, I believe, comes into play. The A320 and C-series aircraft were quite similar in what they offered airlines. Sure, there were some size differences, but they had a lot more similarities than differences. As there was no spare number in the A320 family, Airbus opted for the A220. This in turn could allow them to use the A230 potentially as another aircraft name for a plane that would likely be a bit bigger than the A320neo and A220 or on par with the A330neo in maybe 35 years. Unlike Boeing, the recent move by Airbus to begin the A200 series sets them up nicely for the future. While, while with Boeing we're kind of left in the dark attempting to figure out what could be next after their highly rumoured and hyped NMA, dubbed to be the 797 by most. We've also seen Airbus discuss the possibility of an A322. This would be a stretched A321, hence the naming of the two on the end to signify it's doubled in size, if you will. This could actually be applied to other aircraft in the Airbus series. For instance, potentially an A331neo, even though it does sound very weird, maybe an A351. It does sound really silly saying it now, but the A322 would have been quite an odd name to hear 10 or so years ago. The biggest question I have from all these discussions on the future of the naming of Airbus aircraft is do we actually have too many already? Let's think about it. Airbus alongside Boeing have a fantastic portfolio of planes. Airbus have a single old jet. They have their A330neo to compete with the 787. They have the A350 and then they have the A380. This covers almost all aspects of what the aviation market deems necessary in 2018. Should they create the A360, what would it truly be based on and would there actually be a need for it? Personally, I don't know because I feel like Airbus have a lot of avenues covered right now in 2018 and launching another aircraft might not be the best move and as I said earlier on, they're probably better off working on developing their current series of aircraft which are performing nicely. So that's why Airbus named their aircraft in the pattern of the A300 series. Of course, you'll have to exclude the A200 series for title purposes as it really does just complicate things. But I hope you were able to potentially understand and also learn something new about the naming rights. While I've shared what I believe will be next for Airbus, let me know what you think will occur. 
Will they leave the A360, A370, and A390 untouched for a century or something? Will they move straight to the A200 series, or is that A220 just simply a one-off? Let me know in the comments section below. Once again, I'd like to thank you very much for watching this video of mine, and I do look forward to you all joining me in the next one. Race all of these broken dreams in flight And we'll fly